Today we will be discussing chapter, uh, chapter 10, section 4, 10.4 in our book, in our study of the statics. Today we will be discussing the moments of inertia for composite areas. So now we are talking about composite areas instead of continuous areas as we used to discuss in chapter 10, section 2. So now we have composite areas. Like the same as we did in the centroid, we had composite areas and then we had to find centroid for the whole area. Now the composite area basically, the book says that it consists of a series of connected or simpler parts or shapes such as rectangles, triangles and circles and so on. So now for these shapes we know the uh, uh, moment of inertia for these uh, shapes. Uh, I will show you now how we actually we actually we tried to find them in the previous lecture using the continuous analysis. Uh, but today actually you will uh, you will have uh, values for these shapes at the back of your book. I'll show you later. So if we know the uh, value for the moment of inertia for these shapes around their or about their centroidal axis, then if we want to find the uh, the moment of inertia about an axis or around an axis which is parallel to the centroidal axis for each of these shapes, we use the parallel axis theorem. Uh, so uh, the idea is very simple. You have one shape which is a composite shape. You divide it into simpler shapes and then you find the moment for in of inertia about a definite or some axis for each shape and then you just sum them up algebraically. So uh, I'll show you one. Uh, uh, we will start to, uh, solving together one problem in the book. This is problem 1026 in the 14th edition. 1026 page uh, 544. Here, the question is asking us to determine the moment of inertia of the composite area. Now we have composite area, right? About the x-axis. About the x-axis. Now, we have this whole area. As you can see, as you can see it's, it's composed of uh, three different elements or geometries. A triangle here, a rectangle here, and a circle. Now, this circle is empty. So, we can conclude that we have to find the moment of inertia for these three shapes. Add the triangle to that, or add the triangles, the moment of inertia, to that of the rectangle. So sorry, this is the triangle and the rectangle. Add them together and then subtract the uh, that of the uh, circle because this is a whole. So now. Before we start, we have to think, where is the centroid of this triangle? So the centroid of this triangle, as we know, it's just one over third from this corner and one over third uh, in the y-axis. So it should be somewhere here. So if the centroid is somewhere here and we are looking for the moment of inertia about the x-axis, then we have to use the parallel axis theorem. This situation is the same for both the circle and the rectangle. So let's start solving and see how things go. So first, we know for a fact that Ix, because we are, we are looking for the moment or the moment of inertia about the x-axis, so Ix equals, according to the parallel axis theorem, I bar x prime plus the area multiplied by the distance or square the distance or distance squared which distance the perpendicular distance to the x-axis so now we have three shapes assume this is one this is triangle one let's just call it triangle and we'll solve it together so one find for the triangle triangle sorry Now, we need to find i bar x prime first. This is a known value for these shapes. You can find it at the back of your book. So if you go to your book, just scroll down all the way to the last page, just one page before the last one. So you'll, you'll see here a table 
showing you the centroid location and the area moment of inertia for, for uh, uh, some known shapes. For example, this is the circle. For the circle, I, or the moment of inertia about the x-axis is 1 over 4, pi r to the power 4. It's the same for the moment of inertia about the y-axis. For the rectangle, ix is 1 over 12 bh cube, iy is 1 over 12 hb cube. For the triangle, ix is 1 over 36 bh cube, and we always define b as the width, h is the height, right? So now we are we, we, we want to solve first for the triangle, so we use this value, 1 over 36 bh cube. So we go over here, we say this is equal to 1 over 36 multiplied by 300, right? bh cube, 1 over 36 bh cube. b is 300, h cube is uh, this height, which is 200 cubed, multiplied by 200 cubed. Now, plus the area of the triangle is half multiplied by the base, which is 300, multiplied by the height, which is 200, plus, or multiply it, sorry, and then we multiply it by the, the distance to the, uh, the distance between the centroid and the x-axis. So we know for a fact that the centroid, for a, this, this, we are looking for this distance, right? So this, this, let's assume this centroid, the centroid is here. We know it's 2 over 3rd from this uh, acute angle, and it's 1 over 3rd from the, uh, the, from the, from the, um, uh, this uh, 90 degrees angle. Mm -hmm. So here it's 1 over 3. So 1 over 3 multiplied by the height. So it's 200 over 3. So this distance from here to here is 200 or oh, 200, sorry, 200 over 3 in millimeters multiplied by 200 over 3 and this is squared. So this is the perpendicular distance to the x-axis. So you get Ix for the triangle of 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 millimeters to the power 4 and remember the units for mom moment of inertia is length to the power 4. This is a triangle. Now let's go and solve for the rectangle 2 rectangle Now, for the rectangle, we know its centroid is exactly at the center, right? So, it's like at 150 millimeters from this edge or this side. And it's also 150 millimeters from this side and 100 millimeters uh, from the x-axis. So, immediately, dy is 100 millimeters. So, now... For the rectangle, I need to find or find uh, the, the moment of inertia about its centroidal axis. So about the x-axis, it's 1 over 12 bh cube, where b is the width, 1 over 12 bh cube. So we use it. ix, we know we are looking for ix, 1 over 12 b is 300, right? This is b. h is the height. 100. Sorry, the height is 200, not 100. So 200 cubed plus the area is 300 multiplied by 200 and the vertical distance to the x axis from the centroid. So this is the centroid of the rectangle, right? It's exactly 100, so multiplied by 100 millimeters squared. Okay, so this is this yields 8 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 millimeters to the power 4. Okay, 
Now, let's go and find uh, the moment of inertia for the circle. Hmm? For the circle. Now, here you go. At the back, to the back of your book, look for the circle. I around the x-axis is 1 over 4 pi r to the power 4. r is the radius. Hmm? So now, ix is... pi over 4 multiplied by the radius to the power 4 plus the area. The area of the circle is pi r squared, right? Pi r squared. So pi multiplied by 75 to the power 2 multiplied by the distance. Again, the distance is exactly the same because this is the center of the area, it's the centroid. So this distance between the centroid of the circle and the x-axis is 100 millimeters. So multiplied by 100 to the power 2. This gives us 2.02 .02 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 millimeters to the power 4. That's it. So we found the moment of inertia for these three shapes. So now you get, you need to find the i total, or i uh, about the x-axis, right? For the total area, it's just their algebraic sum. So for the triangle, it's two multiplied by ten to the power eight. Plus for the rectangle, it's eight multiplied by ten to the power eight. But now to be careful, we have to subtract the circle. So it's minus, because this is a whole, right? So minus 2.02, .02, 10 to the power 8. So the moment of inertia for the whole shape about the x-axis now is 7.98 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 millimeters to the power 4. That's it. Very easy, right? So, um, in the next video, we will be uh, finding the moment of inertia for this whole shape about the y-axis. Thank you.